Welcome back to How Not to Play Like Will Wheaton. This week, we will be reviewing one of my favorite non-traditional deck building games. Smash Up. Like most of the games I have covered so far, one of the most important decisions in Smash Up is made before a single card is drawn, and that is which two factions should make your deck. This sets up the dynamic that decides how to best proceed in playing throughout the game. Each faction has its own playstyle, and certain playstyles work better together than others. The first set of combinations I want to discuss involve the zombies. The zombies are arguably the best faction in the core game, because their return from the graveyard theme works well with pretty much every other faction. Now, because of this, they are often drafted first. One faction they work well with is the robots. The robots are all about playing tons of minions, and the zombie theme increases the number you can play by using both your hand and your discard pile as areas to draw from. It can be really annoying for your opponents to see that Microbot Alpha come back base after base after base. Also, there is a lot of synergy between the Zombie Lord and the Zapbots. Have a bunch of Zapbots in your discard pile? Play the Zombie Lord to bring them back and then get to play even more minions with the Zapbot's power. It is easy to pop bases that were not even close to popping very quickly. Another faction that works well with the zombies is the aliens. The aliens have a card called the Invader that gives you one victory point every time he's played. It is nice with the rest of the alien cards, but usually you need to make sure you bounce it back with one of your many but finite bounce cards before the base pops or someone else destroys it. With the zombies, that doesn't matter anymore, because you can easily retrieve it from the discard pile. This combo works really well if you get at least one invader, but can have a difficult time if you have to rely on popping bases. Also, there is little synergy between the zombie lord, the biggest zombie minion, and the aliens, because the collector is the only two power alien minion, and he is much better used bouncing the invader than using his base fodder. One last faction that the zombies work well with is the wizards. The wizards' extra actions let you bring out the zombies faster, and since the wizards are mostly low power, they combo really well with the zombie lord. Also, sacrificing your zombie lord lets you draw five cards and makes it so you can play him again to use his ability. Now that we are done with the zombies, the next combination I want to mention is one that was played during both Smash Up games on tabletop. The robot wizards. The robots focus on playing lots of minions while the wizards play lots of actions. Intuitively they might not seem to work well together because they are completely opposite, but the wizards make a great draw engine to fill your hand with the multitude of robots you can play. The biggest problem with this deck is that the hand limit can become a major factor, but since you'll be shuffling your deck at least once due to running out of cards, it's not such a big deal. Usually it is better to play your actions first and draw lots of cards to get the best variety of robots to chain. Also, always try to start with either a Microbot Reclaimer or a Microbot Fixer if possible, because that is the only way they will count as free minions. An extremely annoying combination to play against, but hilarious to play with, is the Alien Tricksters. Once again, the strategy focuses on the Invader. Actually, it does much more so than with the Zombie Aliens. Using Shrouding Mist to keep playing the Invader again and again, while making it extremely hard for your opponents to break bases and score points. The Tricksters are also good at protecting your invader, which is important since there is not a good way to get him back if he ends up in the discard pile. One interesting fact about this combo is that it is extremely powerful against the pirates. Since all of the minions except the Collectors and the Gremlins have more than two power, and losing the Gremlins benefits you and hurts them. This combo works much better in low player games because if you only need to mess with one or two players, you can easily control the game. One last combination I would like to discuss is the Dinosaur Pirates. This combination is a little redundant, but in a good way. Both of these factions have the largest minions, which means you will almost always have the card you need to push a base over the edge. This combination works best in large games. More people means each person will on average contribute less towards the base total, and with the largest minions, it gives you a great advantage. Also, it makes the first mate cards more effective, because having an extra two power on a base can often be the difference between first place and second place. 
Additionally, many of the pirate destruction cards destroy lots of minions. So the more minions there are, the better chance you have to maximize the effectiveness of those cards. Also, you need to remember a late game Cave of Shinies can be your best friend. Move all of your first mates there, and either broadside or powder keg yourself into the win. That's all for this episode. I want to hear how you came out of nowhere and won, or if like Will Wheaton, you had victory snatched away from you when you were only one turn away from winning, in the comment section below. Please remember to share, like, and subscribe, and I will see you next time on how not to play like Will Wheaton.